I love nails, and I love it when there's lots of stuff in it. I love layering acrylic in different colors, sculpting gel, stamping, gems, beads, and crystals. But there's a trick to not making it too thick. That's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna play with layers. Let's get started. Okay, I've buffed them up, and they're all ready to go for prep and bond. And that's what I'm gonna put on them right now. Just gonna get my Let's Prep on there. And Let's Bond. Just in case you're starting to do nails, these two items, one cleanses, Let's Prep is to cleanse, and Let's Bond is where the product grabs onto your nails. Without your bond, it might not stick. That might could be a lifting issue if you have one. Okay, so. I am going to just layer this up. I love layers because it just adds dimension. It adds so much different facets, especially when you look at it maybe a bit differently, but I hate thick nails. And it is easy to make it on the thicker side when you are trying to add layers. And you could even just be talking two layers. <laughs> it can make it thicker. So the best thing to do is think of it this way. Think of how you want the nail to be, how thin you want your nail to be. And you've got to, if you're just doing the one bead method, if you're doing that, or three beads to get one nail or whatever, even seven, doesn't matter. Just that, that one nail. Think of just that one depth of nail. If you're going to do layers, you still got to do it that thin, but you're doing all those different layers inside that one nail. So it's not that we're going to go layer, 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 and then we're going to get super thick. So I am just putting on me form. Okay, so I'm not going to count the prep and the bond as the first layer. I am going to count the first layer, though, being I want a thin layer on top of my natural nail because I'm going to put down color. And the reason why I want a nice thin layer before I put down the color is because if and when I'm going to change this out, because I'm probably not going to wear this design until it grows off my nail because that could take three to six months and I'm going to get very bored. So I want to put a thin layer of a clear or a soft pink or something kind of see-through-ish so it doesn't interfere with any colors that you do so that when you put your colors on top, it doesn't stain the nail and or it's easier to get off when you file it down to a thin layer. So I'm just thinking ahead. So I'm going to use my pink tint and I'm just going to get a very small bead and place it on my finger and just give a nice, almost like as thin as nail polish. When I go away from the screen, I'm literally just tapping the table and releasing monomer out of my brush. I got a little paper towel here and I'm just tapping the monomer out so I can shape the brush, shape the nail. <laughs> And this is very, very thin. So this is our first layer, and it's very, very thin. I'm just gonna get a tad bit more toward the apex, because I don't know if it reached it all the way to the end. You know, I've gathered all my favorite colors that I'm in the mood for right now, and gems, and, and maybe things that I won't use, but I've just gathered a whole bunch of things, because sometimes you never know what you're going to do until you start doing it and you just get sort of motivated. So I'm going to turn it sideways every now and then so you can still see how thin it is. We're still very low profile. It's not thick. The reason why we need to do it nice and thin is because you may start sculpting and you could sculpt off the product that you don't want and you're going to dive into the design. That's why you have to make each layer really, really thin. So when you do do the sculpting, it doesn't dig in, you know, because that's a bummer. You do all this beautiful work, beautiful layering, and it only looks good if it's really thick. <laughs> Easy to do. I mean, I speak from experience. I've done all of this. That's why I'm trying to save you some time. Now it's very, very soft, very faint, but I did use the purple and the yellow and the sort of a soft pastel green on this one. And I do like that, but I didn't use any of the coral yet. So let's maybe bring in some of that. Let's start. I'm going to ombre these guys.
forgive my clumsiness a little. I am doing this nail upside down. Okay, I think I'm going to add some yellow. So this is our second layer. Before, with the layer of pink, that's the layer we're going to file down to when I decide I want to change the color. That's the layer I'm going to file down to. I'm going to bring this down a little bit on the one side. This is going to be the shape of the first layer. Okay, so I am going to add a little bit more coral because I find that I need more intensity. It's very soft. Totally love that. Okay, so this is where I'm going to start layering down here. So now officially, let's turn it sideways. Not bad still, that's still in the shape of a nail, it's beautiful. But I do see that little side, right? See that little gap right there? Icky, so I'm gonna just take a little teeny, weeny, tiny, tiny bead and get it in there. Okay, so we're going to let that cure up and then we're going to shape that and we're going to start adding our layers down the end. Looks kind of weird, but there is a method to my madness. <laughs> so once it's dry, just to sharpen it, you don't have to do this, it's totally up to you, but you can just crisp the edge up a little bit by running the file along before you put the next layer down. And like I say, this is totally optional. You can take the form off and do it too, actually. <laughs> but sometimes putting the form back on is a bit of a pain. So to save time, I tend to not take the form off. Okay, so if you, as long as you have this layer, these layers here, nice and thick, you can slap this on in any old way. Now, my decision is color. If I want a more contrasty look next to the yellow, I should do a contrasting color that will really show those edges. So... I'm going to take a chance that I did that nice and crisp. This is, you know, when you file it, it's when you're going to really tell if you did a good job or not. It's always a scary point for a nail technician when you're filing that part. Did you do it crisp? That's when you're going to be able to tell. Okay, so I'm just going to add some purple next to the yellow. Those two colors go really well together. And I am going to try to see if I can lay it in pretty accurately. You just need a tiny little bead right there. What a pretty color. Now because I'm doing this essentially upside down, I'm not quite sure if it's exactly where I want it to be. It looks pretty good. I'm going to make the, as it comes out this way, as it, as it swoops down, I'm going to make it a little bit wider at the bottom. So maybe I'll add another little bit. Although I might make that progressively get wider as the colors go down the nail. If that makes sense. So I'm just going to... I've never done this before, so I don't know if this is even going to look good. I'm hoping it does. And I wouldn't, if, unless a client's really into just winging it, <laughs> I wouldn't do this for a paying client just because you don't know how it's going to turn out. So they may not want to pay for it. If you're just, you know, I used to have a few clients that they would just let me do anything. It was just winging it. And I sort of made a deal. And if you don't like it, then I won't charge you for it. <laughs> I just sort of use it as an experiment or something. But and sometimes you just come up with the coolest designs and sometimes you don't okay as long as you make it high enough remember because we're going to sculpt it before we clear cap it and you know it may not even have to clear cap it but 
we're going to make sure that we have room to do that. Okay. So it looks like a mess, but that's okay. It's as long as it's high mess, <laughs> we're going to be able to file that top messy layer right off. So I have two choices. I can leave this with the acrylic and the way I've shaped it with the brush thinking it might be okay if I just put some more colors up against it. You won't really know until you take that top layer off and you see the crispness of it. And it could be a little wobbly crisp edge. So we could wait for it to dry and then we file it a little bit like we did the yellow and we could just keep doing that as we go down and down and down and down. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and just layer whatever color I think looks good. Okay, it looks like a mess, but I'm hoping it files up with some charm. I'm going to go ahead and do some more application on the other fingers. I really don't know what I'm going to do yet. So I'm going to start by putting the first layer on the nail plate areas. Honestly, up until two seconds ago, I really didn't know and I still don't quite 100% know what I'm going to do or if this is going to look any good, but I am going to make the whole length a nice clear on here. A couple of cats in here and they're climbing all over my stuff. Okay, so I've just built the length out. I'm going to turn it sideways. See how thin that is? I'll take the form off too when it dries so you can really see that's nice and thin. That's what we want. So let's do something with a pinky. Um, maybe we'll just do a solid nail with the pinky. Okay, I think I'm going to do the free edge in this. I do it sideways sometimes when I place the bead on a smaller finger just because of the product. I've got a thin layer of the clear pink on there. Well, it's an ombre, so I'm going to do the free edge being the very, very beautiful, soft, soft pastel green, like me sweater. You know, this reminds me of a question that I had on my community page on my website. It was a very good question, actually, <laughs> is do you have to make the pinky as long as all the other fingers? Well, it's a great question because the pinky is entirely smaller overall the whole finger is smaller than all the other fingers so if you make it as long as the other fingers which is more in line with each other's size they compare to each other much better if you make it the same length as all the other fingers then it is actually too long for the pinky so to make it look more natural i know we're doing fake nails but to make it look a little bit more in harmony with the hand I would make it a little bit shorter. It's still long for the pinky and probably the same length, but when you compare it to the others, it's not as long. Does that make sense? So making it a little bit shorter than the rest is right on point. It's a great question. So I've got the first layer down, which is the clearish pink on the pinky, and then I've got the full on the free edge of the color. Now I'm going to ombre the two of them and again, it's upside down, so <laughs> I may have to flip it back over just to make sure I do a good ombre. But I notice a little gap. I don't like my um, bottom cover when I do an ombre to be so abrupt. So I'm just going to try to soften it here just a little. I need to turn this over a little so I can get a bit of a fade. Oh! <gasps> 
we've got company. Somebody's being very nosy. Okay, so I'm just sort of ombre that. And I'd be careful when you do that because you can offset the form. Now I'm going to ombre it with the yellow. This would be my second layer. And I'm going to put that again. Sometimes I do them a bit. Oh, there's a hair in there. I don't want that. Big cat hair. Well, it was, wasn't was black hair, so it wasn't the cat that was no, just here. No, it's the other kitty. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to put it in a bit sideways like that. Just pop it in there. And I won't focus on the ombre part right now, but I am going to focus on the cuticle. What is she doing? I don't know. She is digging around. Yeah. We've got boxes of equipment and stuff and empty boxes too and she's just having fun. So I've laid in the yellow at the cuticle. I was really focusing on the cuticle there and you can see, look at this, it just looks horrible at this point. It's not really blending very well because I don't have a big enough bead but that wasn't my focus. The apex was not my focus here. So now I'm going to get another layer. This is the bead that I'm going to ombre and fade into that beautiful green. Truth be told, it is easier to ombre these colors together because they're so similar. I mean, having said that, I am pretty good at ombre, but it is very easy to ombre two colors that are very similar. Okay, so let's file this up now, file this guy up because we need to put another layer of stuff on it. So let's just file them up and see how they look. Okay, so I filed them down because I wanted to get a layer of uh, stamping on this one. We wanna put a layer of a design underneath and I really like this one. Okay, so I'm gonna just put I don't have to go so wide actually because it's a very narrow nail. I always try to decide what's the nicest pattern I want. I just covered that part. So I'm actually gonna go into the cuticle area and I'm gonna do that too. I don't know what I'm gonna do in there, but I'm gonna That's pretty, I kind of like it when it's, when you can't even tell what it is, it's just a lot of gold. I'll stick a leaf over there. Now you can remove it from your cuticle now, or you can just wait till you finish the whole design and you do it later. Okay, now if I turn it sideways, you can still see, see how low profile that is? Very low still. So I'm gonna stick some stuff in there. Okay, so I'm gonna pour some of my beads here. I've got a few different, these are super, super tiny, in different sizes. Then I got some of these gold gems I'm just gonna put out here and then I can sort of decide, I don't really know. Okay, so I'm gonna grab a little bit of hard gel and I'm going to, I'm gonna focus on that area. Like if I turn it sideways, you can see this little dip area there. That's what I'm gonna focus on putting some gems in, but I will cover the whole nail. Because I think I might put gems elsewhere too. So I'm just gonna do that paint down there, that uh, nail polish paint is dry. I'm just going to paint this on top. And this is where I'm gonna put all my gems, just let that, it'll just settle. I'm just gonna have a little fun placing some gems. And these are gonna be inlaid. This is sort of nestling right inside that thick hard gel. Just slip that in between the two. And now I just want some really tiny beads. They're so tiny, but they look really good when you just place them in between stuff. They just add a tiny little glimmer. Okay, I like that. I'm just going to, because it's a gel, I'm just going to give it a bit of a nuke just to hold it in its place because I don't want it to move. I am going to put some gems around the cuticle area though. 
I could have done it all at once, but I wasn't thinking about that when I did this, so that was my bad. And I'm going to pick up this, I don't even know what you call it, it's like a half circle. I, look at that. Just really tops it off, eh? Just love that. Very cool. Okay, I'll give that a quick nuke, and then we'll do some of the other ones. So I don't want to add too much width, especially near the cuticle. Now, if it was the apex, you can add more, much more layers, right? But we got a pretty good shape going on. I'm going to add some mylar. You can do it with a ball of acrylic, clear acrylic, but I'm going to do it directly with the, just the monomer. And I'm just going to put it in. I like this color of mylar because it is the same, got the same purple and a little bit of the limes and the yellows in there as the acrylic. So I'm just going to put a little bit in here. It could blow away with a sneeze, so it will stick with just a tiny bit of moisture. Just a little bit of monomer will do it. I want to get a little bit of glitter on the cuticle, but I do want to protect it because I don't want to file it all the way. So I'm going to get a little bit of monomer on my brush. I'm going to dip it into the clear powder and I'm going to dip it into the glitter. I'm going to put it on my pinky. I just want to get a bit of a, a glitter ombre going there. Okay, so I want to protect that glitter that's in there. So I'm going to take a very, very thin layer of clear with nothing in it, and I'm going to float that right over top you just want to cover over top of that glitter. So when you file, you won't file it all the way. Now I've got a beautiful apex and that is a perfectly beautifully shaped nail. The mylar is not working for me like I thought it would. Do you like it, Caraman? I like it. I don't, I don't know think I like it. it. But I thought it was pretty cool just by itself. Just kind of a 70s kind of. 70s well that is the first <laughs> well, sign for me I am getting rid of it something you see I'm laughing you just dated yourself so bad oh I know mm. I saw it on YouTube don't know anything about it from real life <laughs> yeah okay so I didn't really like it I think because it's too chunky so I wasn't really feeling it and I could be wrong and I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it I love mylar but it just wasn't working for me. This one needs a really good um, top coat of the gel. So let's just turn it sideways so we can remember what state it's in. See that? So I can handle a little bit of height near the cuticle, a little bit through the apex, but I'm trying to balance this bead while it's waiting, but I want to put it mostly in this area here. So that's what we're going to do. need a little bit more through the free edge and I'm gonna need some more near that cuticle I kind of didn't place that in a proper spot so let's get it up near the cuticle and do it properly gel is funny you sort of squish it into the area that you want it to be even though it looks like it's gonna overflow and it will pull back for you you squish it into the space so it gets like sticky on the area that you want it to go and then it will pull back. Okay, so then I'm looking, oh yeah, isn't that beauty? I'm just gonna check this side right here. It's hard for me to see that on a certain angle, so I'm just double checking me work here. Okay. Mm, mm, mm. Okay. You can, this is a little trick, you can hold it upside down so the gel will fall a little and create an apex. So you don't have to. So once you get it where you want, sorry, I've got so many different things, we're not just focusing on one thing. I'm going to hold it just like that on a bit of an angle. This is a very... It's a thicker viscosity, which I really love. Okay. And I'm just going to give that a good nuke. 
Okay, so let's just take a look at that sideways and see how nicely that filled that nail right in. Now, obviously it's too thick through here and that has, I've just sculpted it and stuff, but you can see how that nicely that filled it right in. And that's all inside, it's all inlaid. Okay, that's gonna be <laughs> so pretty. Okay, so I am just going to buff this index because these are ready actually to put the final layer, which is the gems on top. So let me just buff this up a little. Okay, so I'm gonna take my coarse file. Unless I'm taking off a lot of product, I don't usually use my easy file for that simply because gel does file up pretty quick and it's much easier to file a long stiletto type nail with a hand file. It's harder to get the e-file around the cuticle, especially the cuticle areas. Okay, so I wish I was filming this. Okay, look what happened. This is what I'm talking about. I'm really big on cuticle separation. What I mean by that is I don't like my cuticle to be even with the product. There should be a dip in between end of the cuticle and where the product begins. Well, I laid that little U-shaped gem in there. I love it. But it's too close to the cuticles, too close. I like my cuticles very thin, so I buffed it right out. It just went flying right actually I couldn't find it I was like hey that thing's missing and I was gone so what we're going to do is we're going to add it as the final layer um for the gems on top oops let me just gently pull this up so nothing's sticking to it and it's probably not the smartest idea okay so now we are going to dust free everybody don't need any more product and powders and not going to do any of that anymore. I'm just going to lay the final coat of the gems on. I'm just going to get a top coat here that I like and just the tip, 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 maybe the toothpickers, whatever you have. I'm just going to secure that thing that I put in there that it got bumped out. Now I'll do it with um, top coat, of course, but I'll put top coat over the whole thing, but I just wanna lay this down first. Oops, get off of there. So I'll top coat it so it'll, be, it'll look really smooth too, but I just wanna hold it in place. Cause sometimes top coats, if you leave them too long, they can run a little bit and I don't want it to do that. I wanna put the top coat at the last minute. And I, I gotta tell you, I like this what am I going to call it? Like, a, it's not really a horseshoe because it's like a half circle thingy. I like it so much. I'm going to put it on all the other fingers. I really like it. Okay, so I've got this little half circle. I'm going to place it right there. <laughs> I just love that. That's a cat fuzz all over that. Yeah something so simple so just nuke those in place so they don't move and then we can do the other gems and we don't have to worry about them okay i just thought of another way you can use those little half circles but i'm going to show it on the thumb so i'm not going to tell you you can just just wait it's secret <laughs> surprise i guess is better i don't think i'm going to really do much to this one i think this one looks really good but this one i do want to do some extra stuff too Maybe we'll just do something here. One of the reasons why I picked these colors is kind of you can kind of pick up those colors in the gem. That's why I picked those. Put a star right there. Well, that looks really cute. I honestly don't know if we need much more than that. It's really easy to overdo a design, especially when you're talking sparkle and glitter, right? So I'm going to nuke it in place because I like it. So I'm going to leave it. That's ready for top coat. I'm just going to do a little something on the pinky. I'm just going to top coat it right now. I may take it all off, but let's just wing it. Just have a little. Come on now, get off of there. So 
you have that fell down. Looks like you got a happy face going. You know here. what? I see that on this side. <laughs> Look at happy face. It looks like a happy face that way too. Oh, it's got a hat. It's got a face. Oh my goodness! On. Well, you from your from this camera angle, it does look like that. Mm -hmm. Maybe we should just leave it and see if anybody says anything. Yeah, maybe it's too dumb. It's quite out of character from the other nails. It's got such a geometric mm -hmm. kind of like an emoji. Mm -hmm. That's funny. Well, I put the eyes a little closer together. Put that uh, in. That's a nose. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of a cute kind of cartoon character. It's kind of funny. Mm, maybe I should take it off. Uh, yeah, why not? Okay. Maybe I'll do a littler one. Littler ones really stay in place. That is little. I mean, I don't even know if you can see it. Like I have some really tiny gems. They might be too tiny, but. Okay, nuke it without moving it. That looks pretty good. Okay, I think we're just ready for the reveal top coat now. So the pinky is going to look much the same because we already top coated the whole thing. I'm just going to seal in those gems that I put on top of there. I had top coated it before, but it got kind of buffed and scuffed <laughs> during the process of the other one. So I am going to re top coat it. Now that pretty one. Ooh, I can't wait. Oh my goodness, look at that. Yeah, dazzling. Just... Oh, isn't that pretty? Oh, Gigi, you're having a little peek? Which way are you? Oh, there she is. Hey, Gigi. Having a peek? Okay, let's finish doing... And you can put your top coat right over top of your gems. If I have tons, I tend not to. I don't want it to get gummy, right? We don't have that many in this design. Oh my goodness, isn't that pretty? Okay, this one's really gonna make a pop. Isn't that pretty? I honestly would like to see a whole set done like this, I think. I really like that. Super pretty. Okay, let's check out the reveals. Now you get to see the thumb. I actually really like it. I do see a little boo-boo on my pinky. Before I was able to get into the light, that little bee did fall back. <laughs> and another point is, you know how the tip of the nail when you do an almond or a stiletto gets really, really thin? Well, I had a little bead there and it rubbed the top of the gold off. Okay. Oh, I just want to quickly show you, see the low profile we've got? We've got a few layers in there and we actually embedded gems and we still have a very thin, low profile nail. It's exactly what we want. You can take a look at the other ones are still, are also quite a low profile, not bulky at all. Check out that pinky, very pretty. Now I did speed through the filing part, which is a really important part, but I didn't wanna make the video too long and I was kind of focusing on layers and gems and whatnot. But if you'd like to see a more in-depth version of learning how to use your files, which is a big part of it. It'll make your filing a whole lot easier if you know what each file can do for you. Check this video out.